If you get a paper cut or scrape your knee, what is the first thing you look for? A band-aid, of course. But have you ever wondered how these flexible adhesive band-aids are made and exactly how much effort goes into making them? Let's find out. Step 1. Choosing and preparing raw material. Adhesive bandages or band-aids compromising an elegated strip of material, having a century located blister pad with adjacent adhesive portions on both sides of the pad area, are prepared from an elastic backing material. The backing material and bag are often made of coated paper, but in some cases, they may be made of plastic. A strong adhesive is used to secure the blister pad to the center of the bandage strip. A medicated gel may be deposited on the bandage strip covered with the blister pad, to provide a medicated bandage for serious wounds. We generally use a woven fabric, plastic such as PVC, polythenide, polyurethane, or even a latex strip for adhesive sheets. It depends on the manufacturer whether the band-aid is to be made waterproof or not. The adhesive used in this process is commonly acrylate, including methacrylates and epoxy dichrolites. These are also known as vinyl resigns. Lastly, the absorbent pad at the center of the strip is commonly made of cotton. Sometimes a thin porous polymer coating is applied over the absorbent pad to keep it from sticking to the wound. An antiseptic solution is also used for macating the pad. In some cases, the pad is made of a water-absorbing hydrel. This is especially common in dressings used for healing blisters because the hydrel will act as a cushion. These are the raw materials needed to make the small medical dressing. Now, let's take a deep dive into the method used to produce band-aids on a larger scale. Step 2. Preparing the backing material Strip adhesive bandages like band-aids are fabricated from continuous lengths of bandage material. This material is the primary support of the plaster, and it's known as ETS. This fabric comes from in the form of elastic foams, or films, and is flexible in only one direction. It's the portion that will form a sticky part of the bandage. A common backing material that successfully meets the desirable bow characteristics for cushioning and elasticity for secure placement and comfortability to the body is a plasterized PVC foam material. It is a perfect support material, but many types of different backing materials can also be usable in this process. However, a preferred fabric is a PVC elastic foam with a bulk density of about 30 pounds per cubic foot and preferably about 20 millimeters thick. This is a truly fascinating process. For example, if we take a 1,800 meter roll of fabric, it can make 1.8 million small bandages and 300,000 large bandages. And with that, moving on, it's time to bring adhesives into the mix. Step 3. Heating and Applying Glue A thin glue coating will be applied on the fabric surface. Then the material will then be heated roughly to 49 degrees Celsius in an oven to puff it up. This will create holes in the glue coating. Step 4. Cutting and Shaping The band-aids we use in our lives comes to us in neat, rectangular shapes. How is that made possible? For that purpose, the fabric will be rolled into a 300 meter length. These laminites are cut transversely into the machine direction in the strips of varying lengths and widths to achieve the dimensions of the desired bandage. At this stage, it is possible to deposit medicated gel or any other material onto the center line of the backing material fabric if the manufacturer desires. Once the rolls have been properly shaped and trimmed, they are ready to be processed further, and the next step is the application of the little cushion protective pads at the center of the adhesive plasters. Step 5. Preparing the Absorbent Pads now, it is time to prepare the small cushion pads that will take the front of the injury and absorb all the fluids. The material used in the making of such pads is often cotton. A large roll of this fabric is laid out and cut with the machine very, very precisely. The machine blades are incredibly sharp and they must be sharpened every six months. Now, the cushion fabric is cut into varying sizes and then put into a large roll. After that, it is separated into narrow strips. These will then be glued onto the ETS fabric later on. Thus, we now have a cushion fabric pad that is ready to be applied to the bandages. Step 6. Fabricating the Band-Aid Next, let's head over to the cutting station, where a machine will fabricate the bandages into transverse strips. The rolls of bandages components will be unraveled and laid out for the machine that assembles them correctly. 
Once they have been unrolled and separated, the bandage will be fabricated by positioning the soft cushion pad material over the center area of the backing material. Adhesives will be used to secure the pad to the support material, and by applying release strips, the adhesive is commonly applied by transfer coating, or another convenient method which is to provide a continuous coating of adhesives over the surface of the elastic base material, to which the pad fabric and the release strips are attached. Then, once the pad and bandages have been firmly glued together, the laminate will then be cut transversely to its machine's direction in strips to width of the desired bandage. Next up is safely wrapping the adhesive bandages. Step 7. Wrapping It is essential to wrap the bandages by applying plastic paper protectors. Once more, a computer control machine comes into play. It wraps the medical plaster one by one and applies the unprinted white wrapping paper over the glue cover ends of the bandage, which protects the bandages. In order to do this, a robotic arm will draw the bandage by suction and place it between two wrapping papers. Increasingly by enough, this machine will get even faster than the eye and can wrap around 300 bandages per minute at full speed. Step 8. Perforating Holes in the Bandage Strips The next stage is perforating holes in the strips that will help the roller. This allows the bandages to be easily separated so that they don't keep sticking to each other. There is another good reason for doing this. A sequential bandage machine is used to pierce excretion holes to allow air to circulate and thus help promote faster healing. Finally, the bandages exit the machine and are taken for safe packaging. Step 9. Packaging The cut strips are carried onto a conveyor belt to a packaging station, where individual adhesive plasters are packaged safely in the sealed envelopes before the sterilization processes. The speed of the packaging depends on the product. It can be anything between 300 and 1,500 bandages per minute. Once the completed bandages are sealed and protected packaging for safe distribution, it is time for the perforation of the strips. At this step, in a typical manufacturing operation, the compoids materials must be fed continuously at a set speed into the cutters. This way, we can achieve maximum output. For the speed of the bandage rolls should be computer controlled to supply the necessary velocity and control to the composite material making up the bandage. Thus, this is a crucial step because without proper machinery and technique, the resultant bandages will be either not cut to the appropriate size or will not have sufficient elasticity to conform the wound area. For example, the preferable speed of the vacuum drum is computer controlled and the velocity of the elastic base material is from 5% to 25%. This is faster than the velocity of the other materials going into the bandage makeup. More preferably, the speed of the elastic base material is kept 10% to 15% faster to speed up the process and increase efficiency. So, a lot of effort goes into cutting and packaging these very small adhesive strips. Once the complete bandages are sealed in the protective packaging for safe distribution, they are taken for sterilization. Step 10. Sterilization After the small flexible band-aids have been packaged, they are taken for sterilization. Almost 10,000 of them are sterilized at one time. From there, the adhesive plasters will be automatically countered and placed into a chute that will take them to the final packaging box. The role of ETS fabric seen at the beginning cannot be overstated enough. On average, it can help the company produce nearly 2 million bandages each year. It's staggering that one facility can make over 4 billion bandages in a year and 65 different molds. Click one of the two videos on the screen right now.